McDonald's versus Burger King. The Giants versus the Cowboys. The Beatles versus the Rolling Stones. All highly debated rivalries, yet they pale in comparison to the timeless debate of Mac versus PC. As a composer and producer, this debate plagues my very existence, and as someone who has swung both ways, and even maybe a third, I'm here to tell you the choice for most people is a pretty clear one. In this video, I will be breaking down the pros and cons of each OS as it pertains to composition and audio production, and give both my objective analysis and subjective thoughts on three key topics and some important mentions. The goal of this video is to lay out the benefits and challenges you may face when purchasing, using, updating, and future-proofing your computers so that you can choose where to invest your money into your next system. With that said, please leave a like, subscribe, and click that bell to turn on notifications. And let's get started with the video. First up, I will be looking into backwards compatibility. The number one benefit of Windows that I feel I encounter is broad software support and backwards compatibility. For many of my friends and viewers who are still holding on to a certain old notation software for a variety of reasons, Mac is the place old software goes to die. Windows can give it life. For example, due to my personal hatred of subscriptions, I refuse to invest in Pro Tools. But at the same time I was looking into Pro Tools, I came across a perpetual license for it on Sweetwater. I bought it and own it for life and I can use it as long as I'd like, but that's contingent on the software support for my OS. On Windows, I've been able to use it for many, many years and still use it today, but on Mac OS, I lost software support after only a year and a half. While Windows is generally awesome at backwards compatibility, it isn't always guaranteed. This copy of Pro Tools no longer runs on Windows 11, whereas my Finale 26 license and my Sibelius license from 2019 are just fine. I won't be getting too deep into Mac's backwards compatibility, but let's just say you will be needing more frequent updates to maintain compatibility with the latest Mac OS, and oftentimes those updates can cost money. This is especially true in regards to plugins, where I'm still able to make use of decades-old VSTs on Windows, whereas that's not as common on Mac, especially with the shift to Apple Silicon. The next key point in the Mac versus PC debate for composers and audio engineers is specs. There are two valid arguments to this debate, and with the launch of the latest M4 Mac Mini, Apple definitively has my vote as the best base model machine available. Basically, I am saying if you want to spend $599 to get the best bang for your buck, get an M4 Mac Mini. If you upgrade anything, upgrade the storage to something like 512 gigabytes or more, the next upgrade you would make, if it's relevant to your workflow, is upgrading the amount of RAM. With that recommendation, that brings me to where Apple falters, and that is upgradability and the cost of upgraded components. Windows takes the crown when it comes to being able to either buy a PC with higher end specs without unreasonable inflated upgrade prices, while also being the only true option for those willing to upgrade hardware to meet your needs as your workload evolves. From my experience, I built an awesome PC in 2019 that had a 12 core AMD 3900X and an AMD RX 5700 XT GPU and 16 gigs of RAM. Down the road, I started getting bigger projects and also invested in sample libraries where that 16 gigabytes of RAM just wasn't enough to get the work done. This was no problem as I was just able to buy the RAM I need that met my hardware specs and simply upgrade to 48 gigabytes for a relatively low cost. For reference, the cost of a comparable RAM upgrade on Mac OS, which you have to purchase at the time of buying the machine, costs $400 for 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is in comparison to Windows, which has options that are only $90 in some cases. These upcharged component prices on Mac OS quickly compound to make Macs generally more expensive than an equivalent Windows PC. Overall, Apple Silicon has an extremely attractive value proposition at the base model, but if you plan on upgrading as you go, or you need high-end specs and need to save a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, go the Windows route. The next most important topic is ASIO versus Core Audio. To some of you who just work in the composition lane with notation software like Dorico, you may not even be aware of the significance of this. ASIO is essentially the professional audio driver optimized for low latency usage on Windows, 
where Core Audio is Mac's overall solution for audio on macOS. The important element here is both operating systems have the capacity to do professional work, and in a desktop environment with the proper hardware like an audio interface, you rarely can tell the difference between the two OSs when working. The fault with Windows Audio becomes more apparent when you are not working with dedicated hardware or are trying to work on a laptop. Let's dive deeper into Windows and how audio is managed in some third-party solutions to its shortcomings. First, while ASIO is the professional audio driver, there are different audio drivers that interface between your hardware and software to play back audio. The trick is, they all generally work like core audio and are flexible except for ASIO. ASIO basically bypasses the middle layer to connect a specific software to your hardware and skips the OS level. This allows latency to be extremely low. While that is a gross simplification, that means sharing your audio on Zoom or using multiple interfaces called aggregate devices can be a hassle. Also, you have to set one standard sample rate, otherwise only certain applications will be able to make noise at the same time. Fear not, however, because there are awesome third-party solutions such as Voice Meter that I personally use and Matrix by VB Audio that solve those Windows audio deficiencies. These third-party softwares honestly give Windows an edge in terms of functionality, but not in simplicity. Let me use the scenario of working in Cubase or Dorico on a laptop. With Core Audio, you can simply pick any device, including your laptop speakers or headphones, and do not have to worry about driver selection. If you need to customize those options, you can achieve that in the audio and MIDI setup on Mac. For Windows, you have to select the new Steinberg built-in ASIO driver, and that is an example of a software that can interface with hardware not meant for ASIO, like laptop speakers. When using dedicated audio interfaces, like those from RME or Focusrite, they have their own ASIO drivers that you're supposed to use, and they are perfectly optimized for your system. The downfall of using a generic ASIO driver, like the Steinberg built-in ASIO driver, is added latency and subpar performance in comparison to macOS when not using dedicated audio interfaces. Voice Meter that I mentioned previously is another example of an intermediary software which also adds additional features such as loopback for sharing different sound sources through video call or recording softwares like Zoom or OBS. While I won't be going in depth in showing you how to use these softwares, I will say setup may require some time and some light research to understand all the routing involved. Also remember, if you are using an audio interface with the proper drivers, the latency and performance will be just as good as macOS. While Windows seems to be at a clear disadvantage, loopback and paywalls on Mac are ultimately what deter me from using it. On macOS, instead of having obvious free to use options for loopback, you would have to pay $100 for something like you can see here. Now, there are free options, but given my light research, and I figure that's the amount of research an average user is willing to do, they can expect to pay a price tag for convenience. Ultimately, given the ease of use on a Mac, I do not foresee all the paywalls being a barrier to many users. However, if you are inclined to put a little more work into a much lower price tag, Windows still remains a great choice. Finally, I want to get into some mentions that aren't necessarily deal breakers, but I think is important to consider as they've affected my choices. If you plan on buying older model Macs, be wary of M1 chips. They have some bandwidth limitations that affect things like the amount of displays you can have, and while that's not a deal breaker because they are such a fantastic machine at a great value, it's just something to be aware of. If you are a Windows user, you already know this, but Windows Update sucks. It is invasive. Even when I click shut down without allowing an update, it usually does it anyway. It will update in the middle of a workday, and sometimes it's really annoying. Sometimes Windows updates can even break functionality. That said, you can disable automatic Windows updates through various means and mitigate this issue. On the security front, you may have heard Macs are virus free, and this is simply not true. Practicing good online habits along with built-in virus and malware protection and max rigorous and sometimes annoying permissions will generally give you a virus-free experience on Mac. Windows used to rely on third-party applications for virus protection, 
but with Windows Defender and all Windows releases since 2006, the difference is null and both systems truly depend on your online habits as a first line of defense. This also means do not buy third-party antivirus software for anything. It's not worth your money. Fifth is the Finder versus the File Explorer and generally the whole desktop environment. I personally find it much faster to work with the Windows File Explorer than the Finder on Mac. That is simply a personal preference. You should pick the desktop environment you feel most comfortable in and stick to that because ultimately there are solutions on both sides for specific needs such as loopback and they simply just require your time or your money. In conclusion, if I had to make a recommendation to someone who isn't tech savvy to begin with, I would recommend Mac. It is straightforward and simple to use, albeit potentially more costly. If someone has a particular interest in computers, working with softwares, having an edge in customization, or is interested in building their own PC, I'd say go Windows. Ultimately, this all comes down to your personal preference, and I personally use Windows despite it not being the popular choice amongst creative professionals, especially in audio and composition. Please comment what you think and why you use a Mac or PC. Also, if you are one of those Linux users, give me some recommendations on softwares I should try out and showcase in a future video. Also, I just launched channel memberships on my YouTube channel at three different tiers. These include various benefits such as priority reply to comments, short video requests demonstrating certain features or topics of your choice, or access to all of my sheet music and recorded music, including Dorico files. If you are interested in showing me support as I go after my 5,000 subscriber goal, please consider becoming a member. And finally, please leave a like, subscribe, click that bell to turn on notifications, and thanks for watching. Can you all hear the train? I swear it never comes by until I'm recording something. Never. Oh boy, I hate this damn train.